Hey guys, what is going on today? I'm going to tell you everything that I know about how to shoot rollers. So we are going to be hopping in this beautiful Porsche 911 to shoot this one of two Porsche 911 GT3 RS with the Vysac package, absolutely gorgeous. The objective of capturing a really great roller in automotive photography is having a tack sharp, beautiful car, but the road in front of that car is blurry, showcasing that there's motion in your image. In order to capture this kind of image, you'll need to focus on having a low shutter speed and moving at the same distance and pace as the car that you're trying to capture. Now there are a few challenges that you can run into when trying to capture this kind of content, so I'm gonna give you guys all the tips and tricks that I know to help you avoid some of these things. One thing I can highly recommend when you're doing rollers is to bring a walkie-talkie with you. Helps you communicate really well with the other vehicle. If you don't have walkie-talkies, one thing I do recommend is figure out what your signals are gonna be before you get on the road. So for me, obviously this has come closer, and then this is hold your position, hold your distance, and then obviously like go back is go away. The other one I really enjoy is like, I do this, which means like blow by me and have a good time and like just rip. So those are my hand signals. Let's get into settings when we get to the final location. Safety should be your absolute priority when you guys are shooting rollers. So as you can see, I'm doing one thing here that I maybe wouldn't recommend to you guys. Let me know if you guys can pick it out and leave it in the comments down below. A few of the directions that I would give the car we were photographing was, hey, when we get open road, I want you to drive up to my right rear quarter panel. All of this was communicated using the walkie talkie. So when we had good lines and a good line of sight that both vehicles could see where it was safe, I would get him to pull up to my right quarter panel. For this shot here, I did tell him for our next shot, you're gonna cruise up to our front right quarter panel and this is how I was able to capture these images here. The camera that I was using to shoot these photos is the Lumix S5 II X. What sets it apart is how great the image stabilization is in this camera. Because the image stabilization is so good, I'm able to keep the camera quite steady and get a really tack sharp focus on the car. The less good the image stabilization is in your camera, the more steady you have to be. I was personally pretty blown away and pleasantly surprised with the incredible image stabilization in the Lumix S5 II and the S5 II X. Compared to the Sony A7S III that my buddy Aaron had here, you could tell there was a significant amount of shake in his video compared to what I was able to capture in my Lumix. I was using a 35 millimeter prime focal length when I was shooting these. I just find that that 35 is a great sweet spot to be able to see enough of the environment while still focusing on the car as the main subject. Of course, you can use wider focal lengths as well. This will help make it feel like it's even faster. The wider you go, the more blur you'll have on the road and that'll enhance the feeling of speed in your image. If you're looking for one great lens that you could do, I would suggest a 24 to 70. This will give you a ton of options while you are hanging out the side of the car to get a bunch of different angles. When it comes to settings on your camera, I always try and set my shutter speed around one over 50 or lower. We've got two cars that have rough suspension, so we were sitting around one over 50. If you can get lower than that, it'll look a little bit more buttery smooth. My ISO, I set as low as I possibly could. And then my aperture, I wanted to sit around 2.8 to 4.0. So that's why I actually screwed on an ND filter on top of my CPL filter as well. To be able to firstly cut the reflections with a CPL filter, and then lastly, that ND filter helps me cut just a little bit more light out so I can pick the aperture that I want. If you don't have an ND filter on the front of your lens, then you're just gonna have to adjust your aperture to maybe a six or seven or eight or nine, whatever it allows you to do, just to make sure you're getting correct exposure. The last thing you need to think about is your focus settings. I have tracking focus on my Lumix S52X, so I just made sure to tap the car and then the focus tracked that car while it moved forward and back. So make sure you have whatever setting you can so that it's on servo focus or continuous auto focus, whichever camera you are using, so that as that car moves forward, forward and back. If you're not moving at the perfect same time, at least your camera will track that car well 
with its autofocus. Now, if you guys are interested, Aaron and I did a comparison between the Lumix shooting in ProRes and the Sony a7S III shooting at 422 10-bit. We just did a bit of a comparison, so subscribe for that upcoming video as well. But that's it for this video, guys. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We're just about to do some POV photography with this car here in this absolutely stunning location. So make sure to subscribe to the channel here. You might like this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. As well, if you have any tips for your fellow car content creators, put them down in the comments below. Let us know some tips that you guys have for shooting rollers as well.